Hi, welcome to What You Sew on Wednesday from Long Arm Reading by Jacqueline. We are busy fulfilling orders right now. It's summertime, everybody um, pulls out their stuff in the spring, doing spring cleaning, and finishes their quilts up, and they start coming to me this time of year pouring in. So we're doing a quick unboxing again today for What You Sewing Wednesday. Um, so this is an order from Joanne Fabrics. This is some Robert Kaufman um, Kona Solids. And I got a variety of blues. I'm actually trying to match a vintage restoration quilt. And I think this is going to be the color. And I don't have a packing list because Joanne doesn't send packing lists. So I want to say this is Blueberry. And these are 45s and they had the um, Kona Solids on sale. So I had to snap those up. I prefer to shop locally, but it is what it is. So I got an assortment of blue so that I could match it in person in the correct light. I think that one is called Blueberry and I think that's the one that's gonna work, but I got that lighter blue. This is kind of a pretty teal, light green aqua color. This is a gray color. It's similar to, um, there's one called Oyster that I think Tula Pink put out. It's sort of taupey, beigey, like a warm, light gray that's nice and then I'm gonna have to hold it up to the quilt in the good light this is a little bit lighter than that first color which I want to say was blueberry this is maybe a close second runner-up to matching my restoration quilt so you got to get um, you got to source the fabric and this quilt was made in 1914 so it's not like that fabric is around anymore so I've got to find it and then I was on my kick of buying wide backs and I thought this was so cool it um, it's called oil slick, but to me it almost looks like marble. So this would be white with like a dark blue veining through it. And this is a wide back, so you could have this on the back of your quilt. And if you want me to finish your quilt, it's currently in stock, first come, first serve. And then it also comes in this other colorway, which they say is dark blue, but it reads to me as black, dark gray. But it's not as aggressive as a black as a solid black, which can be very... Um, almost jarring if you use too much full-on black and it's got this little veining to soften it up so I thought that was a great one and um, this is kind of breaks my rules of stuff I have in stock usually for in stock fabrics I want something that's going to be pretty universal pretty ubiquitous so that I can use it and not just be holding on to it forever but I just thought this was so cute for the right quilt, it's these little rectangles, like you just took a paintbrush and went dab, dab, dab with all these different wild colors. Um, and this is a wide back as well. And it's so cheerful and it's got this navy background which softens it up a little bit. Um, and I just thought that was cute. So I went ahead and got it. I think it was on sale. And then it was also Havendash Day. So my red order came in and so I thought I would show those. These are such pretty colors. So this one is pistachio. So cute, a little soft green. This one is called Desert Sunset. It's like a little bit of an orangey, kind of a brownish, I'm not even gonna be able to get that slip off there. Orangey brownish color. This guy is thistle. So pretty, like a dusty purple. Avocado, I mean with a name like that resist. This would be pretty on so many quilts. Around springtime you get those bright quilts with a lot of yellowy tones. It would be pretty. Um, Persian. I had this in a pre-wound bobbin and it was beautiful and I loved it. So I went ahead and got a mini of it and it's close to this one that I haven't had a chance to use yet. And this one is Cerulean. So I'm learning color names that I never knew. I've heard the word cerulean blue, so apparently it's this blue. And then this one is Persian, which is a little more of a green, slightly lighter. Both pretty blues. Those blues are beautiful. Um, you have to, color like that, you have to use on a fairly dark quilt or it will look kind of insane on a light quilt. This one's called Haze, like um, Purple Haze, the song, or beer if you're from the South. Um, pink rose, a little bit softer than the light pink, which is cotton candy. Of course, I don't have it out. 
um, that I have the big spool of, but very usable, similar to Strawberry Blonde. This one's a little bit more peachy, the Strawberry Blonde. It's got yellow notes to it. I was on a huge blue kick. This is Hawaiian blue. I just think that's very pretty. And it's light enough to be very usable. I use a color a lot called Tar Heel, which is um, made to match the team colors. But it's such a usable blue because it's very medium. It's not too light for the darks and too dark for the lights, and it's very usable. So this Hawaiian blue is close to that. And then Calico. And I don't know why it's called Calico. Maybe like the cat? but a lovely coppery warm shade, almost like a super warm neutral, if that exists. So I guess my high school colors are orange and blue, and apparently I was having a very orange and blue <laughs> moment when I bought these threads. Um, I was placing an order to fill up the order, so I got some mini spools of some colors that I might not use a lot. So I didn't want to get the king spool, and then what am I gonna do with all that thread? So I got some minis. And then this is a new one for me. I'm excited to test this out. So this is a small mini spool of nylon monofilament. So it's clear thread. And you can use this in a domestic sewing machine. I have the Juki NX7 and I love it. But um, it has a stitch that's made to look like hand quilting, like long stitch hand quilting. Um, and you put this in, I think this goes in the top thread for that. I gotta look in the manual. And then you can also put this in the long arm. And so it's like you don't have to worry about what color the thread is because it's clear and the fabric color is gonna show through. So I think for high contrast quilts, this might be interesting. And I know this comes in a, like a clear, clear, and then you can get it in a, it's a clear thread, but it's tinted, so it's got a deeper tone to it. So if your quilt is mostly dark, you might use the, the darkened one. This is Essence Clear. So I'm excited to play with this and see what it looks like and give it a try and find that special project where I can pull this out and see how it is to work with. And um, when I do that, we'll do a feedback video and see what I think and see what I came up with. If I learned anything from this, I'm not sure if it's gonna be different to handle. So we're just gonna have to do some testing and do some experimenting and find out. So that was it. Just a quick what you sew on Wednesday. Um, remember, Father's Day is not that far away. If you've got a graduate and you want to send them off to college with a t-shirt quilt commemorating their high school years, or you want to just send them a little taste of home to decorate their dorm with, now's the time to be working on those projects. If it's an elaborate project or you're a slow quilter, which is perfectly okay, people have lives. Um, now would be the time to start thinking about your fall projects, your Christmas projects. You, you don't want those to kind of stack up on you at the last minute. So start thinking ahead to what projects you'd like to do out there. Um, the day before someone's birthday is not the time to start thinking about making a quilt for them, unless you're like me and you give gifts late. So think about what's out there and kind of backtrack how long is the lead time for your local long armor, which fluctuates they can get a stack of quilts tomorrow and their lead time is blown. So, um, And then think about how long it takes you to comfortably sew that project without putting anybody in a time bind and um, get started on those projects. Usually what I do is if it's someone's birthday and I think, oh, I'd like to make them a quilt, I start designing it for the next year. So I have a full year. I let this year's holiday remind me to start planning for next year's holiday. Because by the time you decide what you're going to make, find the pattern, source the fabrics, choose all your design elements, and you have all that time, plus maybe shipping if they're not close to you, um, it does take a long time to make a quilt, unless you have all the time in the world. And you can just whip one out in three or four days. Um, you're blessed. Congratulations. Enjoy it. <laughs> but most people, it takes quite a bit of time. Um, I got to look at several patterns before I pick a design. I've got to look at several different, even when I'm doing quilting on someone else's, I sometimes take two days just deciding what I'm going to quilt on there. So it does take time for a labor intensive, well-made, handmade gift. And um, so start thinking about those gifts of love now. All right, happy what you sew on Wednesday. 
Enjoy your day. Bye.